What's up you guys, it's T from Immersive Filmmaking. I'll be teaching you guys how to get that dark moody feel that you see all your favorite Instagrammers and photographers use. Here's an example right here and here's another example. Now, we're gonna be doing this on mobile for the simple fact that I feel it is a lot more accessible to people who don't have things such as laptops and computers. Uh, it's just the more photo route, but if you have a laptop or a computer, you guys can go ahead and do the exact same steps that I'm doing to achieve that exact same goal. Also, ignore my broken finger. Today's photo of choice, we will be using Miss Isabella. Miss Isabella is a fantastic model. I've worked with her countless times. And this photo introduces tons of emotion. Her eyes are closed, she's smiling. You can see the snow falling. So there is some sense of action within the photo. So to add that moody feel to this, I think it would look fantastic. We're just gonna hop right into it. So first, we're gonna start in the light panel. In Lightroom, this panel is gonna give you access to things like your exposure, contrast, highlights, so on and so forth. But first, we're gonna play with that S curve. And this is where that secret to that faded kind of moody look comes from. If you guys see this bottom point down here, if we bring that up, you can see how that photo really starts to fade. And that's what's gonna introduce that faded look into our moody look. So we're gonna bring that about halfway or a little bit more than halfway actually. I also wanna keep some of the shadows pretty dark. So I am gonna create another point down here and bring those shadows down. I'm not gonna completely kill the shadows, but I am gonna bring them down a decent amount. Other than that, I still like the highlights and I still want some kind of color or contrast within this photo. So I'm gonna bring that point back up to the very center of this entire graph while bringing this one down so that those shadows aren't completely blown out. So then you go from something like this to that. And already off the rip, the photo is looking tons better but that little this little side right here is going to introduce tons of fade for you guys so you guys get that faded look that we all admire in our moody photos next up we're going to play with exposure contrast highlight shadows whites blacks for me i won't be touching the exposure but i will however touch that contrast we are going to turn that contrast up a decent amount i'm thinking around 30 because i still want her to really pop out from this photo of course it's just a white background with her so she's gonna pop regardless anyways we're gonna go ahead and bring up those shadows just a little bit as well while turning down the whites a considerable amount and then turning down those blacks there we go and i'm thinking that's actually looking pretty good after this play with that graph play with those colors just a little bit maybe we'll turn this just a little bit more down so that we don't kill those blacks but we still get that faded look that we love next up we're gonna hop into the color tab within the color tab i'm gonna bring on the vibrance and the saturation however i will revisit my colors later on in the video so make sure you guys watch that because there is a secret i'll give you guys in order to give it that truly moody feel so first off vibrance we're bringing that down saturation we're bringing that down again just a smidge for me because i do enjoy that faded look where there's no real color it's faded but we will have a color pop so we will go into the color mix tab and bring up the reds just a little bit if you bring it up too much you can see right there that it starts to break you don't want to break colors unless that's like you're going for it, and i'm definitely not so we're going to bring it up about 30 just to get that red back along with the orange we're going to bring that up just slightly just because she has orange tints, orange and yellow tint at least within her face. So we're bringing up some of the saturation in her face. Again, we'll revisit that color tab later in the video, but for right now, this is what we're working with. Next, we can go to the effects tab. We're gonna bring down the D haze. This will also add to that very moody, dreamy feel. You guys can see how that affects our photo there. So we're gonna bring that down a decent amount. I'm thinking probably 15 to add some sense of a glow to this photo. We'll also bring down the clarity again to add some sense of a dreamy feel to this. We want that to introduce things such as mood and a certain tone to get across to our viewers. In this photo, this is very nostalgic. This is a very like in the moment feeling kind of photo. So I want that dreamy feel along with those muted colors and so on forth to bring forward that uh, idea of it being in the moment. Next up for our detail, when I shoot in camera, I typically turn my sharpness down in the camera so I can play with it in post. So for myself, I will be turning it up a considerable amount, but for you guys, feel free to turn it up to your heart's desire. Other than that, I won't be playing with anything else in the detail tab. However, we will come to the effects and the detail tab later on in this video to give you guys another secret on how to make this super moody and super uh, dreamy kind of look. Next up, we're gonna move over to the masking tab. This one right here, I think is extremely important to help isolate things such as your subject from your background or whatever you'd like to bring out within the photo. So for me, we're gonna select the subject. Boom, to me, that's perfect. The Lightroom always does a pretty good job at selecting my subjects, but it's not too hard. She literally contrasts the whole photo. 
Next up, I'm gonna go here to the light. Within my light, I'm just gonna up the contrast a little bit to help her kind of stick out a little bit. And you guys can see what contrast does for me. Help her stick out just a little bit more. I'm thinking about 15 to 20 is looking really good. In terms of highlights, I like to boost my highlights just a little bit because she has paler skin, so the light reflects off her skin really well. So those highlights within her face are definitely gonna pop. And we'll go here into the whites, the blacks, the shadows. There's not too much that I want to pull from that. I'm thinking that looks really good. Color, I'm going to turn up the saturation just a smidge. Too much and we break the colors. So we're going to pull it up just a little bit. I'm thinking around 20, 25 to 30 is looking pretty decent for me. After that, I think we're actually looking pretty good. Things like dehaze can be added if you would like to just kind of boost up, I mean, not boost, uh, to kind of drop those shadows a little bit to give her more of a contrasting look since we did get rid of dehaze globally earlier. For me, Again, this is looking great. I'm really liking this. Now, we're gonna add one more mask. We're gonna select our subject once again. We're gonna invert that so that we can edit just the background again to help differentiate our subject or our object from the background. With this one, I'm gonna turn down the temperature. Typically, I like to use icy blues or nice golden kind of tones in my photos to help me again, differentiate my backgrounds or to help a photo pop. With the photo being all white, I'm gonna add some blue tint because it's snowy, so it's more of a cooler vibe in general. So we're gonna go ahead and pull down those tints. Not tons to where it's extremely blue, but where it's blue enough. I'm thinking around 15 to 16 is looking really good in my opinion. Other than that, that's the only thing I wanna play with here. Maybe in the light, we can turn on the highlights just a little bit more, but that's really all I'm looking forward to, the contrast and stuff like that. Maybe we could turn the contrast up to add a little bit more depth within the photo, but to me, that's looking honestly amazing. So then you go from a photo that looked like this to this, and already that is a photo that you could deliver to a client, of course with a little bit more touch-ups, but you could deliver that to a client and I'm sure they'd be extremely happy. Now if you guys are going for that moody look, here's where the secrets come in. We're gonna get out of that masking panel. You're gonna revisit that color panel. Within the color panel, you could add something called a tint. So you have temperature tint and of course your other options. In the tint panel, you could add greens or you could add that magenta kind of feel to it. I like to typically add more greens than I do that magenta feel, but play with it to your heart's desire. So we're gonna turn that green a little bit down and you'll see it adds a really cool tint to it within the, it adds it globally, so it'd be the whole photo. And I think it looks really cool. We're obviously not gonna go too, too much. We can turn into the Hulk, but <laughs> we're not gonna go too, too much. We're gonna come down and I'm thinking somewhere around, around the 20s, like maybe 18 looks pretty good, honestly. Let's see, 17, I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks nice. You can see the blues with the with the green tints. It's looking really nice. Next up, the next thing you guys can add to truly sell the moody kind of tone or the nostalgic kind of feel that you guys are hoping for is gonna be here in the effects panel. You have something called grain. So now we can emulate or and pull in some of these grains and you can see what that does for my photo. So we turn this up to 100. You guys can see that the photo gets extremely grainy and that adds to that nostalgic feel. So we're gonna pull mine down to almost like the 40s or so, cause I still wanna keep some details. About 45 is looking great to me. You can play with things like the size. You can make them really big, really small, however you guys like. For me, I'm gonna make mine around 30 about. Just you can see the grain, but it doesn't pull too much of that detail away. Then you can go with the roughness, so on and so forth. But with me, I think this looks great. I think overall, it looks like a really good photo. And just from there, now you just kind of play with it, the final touches. For example, I think I'm gonna pull down the shadows just a little bit more, honestly, within the entire photo. Just, oh, yep, just to give it a little bit more of like a darker kind of feel, if that makes sense. I know I pulled them up earlier, but we're gonna pull them down now. I think I'm gonna revisit that mask right here. And I'm actually gonna turn down the exposure slightly there we go so you guys see it's looking way darker way more moody way more tony something like oh i'm thinking a little bit more down something like that so then we go from a photo that looks like this to this i think this looks great it gives off that really moody kind of nostalgic vibe that i was hoping to get it's very dark we could of course make this a super light kind of like playful photo but this is the mood that i like i have other examples such as this photo this photo this photo even this photo those all look great to me but if you guys want to learn how to do those specific photos 
please message me on Instagram. All that would be linked down below as well as her social so you guys can get in contact with her if you guys would like to book her. There's tons of other things I'd love to teach you guys. So be sure to subscribe, leave a like and comment down below if you've even learned one simple thing. With that being said, this video is over. I truly appreciate you guys, especially those who stayed to the end. If you guys would like to support me in any way, you guys can go ahead and subscribe, leave a comment down below and like any of my photos on any of my socials. Other than that, you guys can also book me for a one hour session where we will have a Zoom call and I will teach you guys how to get the look you're looking for, maybe how to correct a photo that wasn't taken correctly or just anything like that and try to help you guys with your guys' company or your guys' personal art. Again, if you guys want to get in contact for me, check out my website down below or you guys can go on my Instagram and send me a DM. With that being said, this is Immersive. This is T. I'm going to talk to you guys later. Peace.